glad you are on board. Welcome to the Sean Hannity Show, 800-941-SEAN, if you want to be a part of the program. Now, we started a discussion on this program yesterday about whether or not uh, the – and this has been this has been a debate that has been going on under the surface for many, many years, whether or not there is some type of infiltration of Islamic extremists in the conservative movement. And it really came to a head at the CPAC – uh, on CPAC weekend this weekend, uh, David Horowitz from the podium made this claim. The Muslim Brotherhood has been wildly successful in its plan to become part of America's civil culture and to infiltrate the institutions of America's civil government, including the White House and both political parties and the conservative movement as well. Suhail Khan is the proud son of Mahbub Khan and his protege as he is also the protege of the convicted terrorist Abdurrahman al-Moudi. Suhail has also been made a board member of the American Conservative Union and was the moderator on a panel on religious liberty yesterday at this event. Suhail Khan used his offices in the Bush White House with Grover's support to carry water for the terrorist Samuel Aryan in an attempt to ban the use of secret evidence in terrorist trials. Over the last 10 years, the influence of the Brotherhood has spread throughout our government. Now, yesterday on the program, we had Suhail Khan and David Horowitz debating this. Uh, as you heard, Grover Norquist for Americans for Tax Reform, name was brought up in this as well. Uh, and uh, anyway, here's what Suhail said also at the uh, CPAC event. Well, what I have a problem with is they, they say, you know, jihad is their way, you know, martyrdom is their goal. I mean, that is antithetic to everything. I, I, I understand all of those you got things. Your, you got your answer. So. I know, I understand you know, all of those things. Do you agree with that, Mr. Khan? With what? That, that we should be outreaching to the Muslim Brotherhood. and, and well, the nation of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States. States. There's no Muslim Brotherhood in the United States. No. All right, so we decided we're going to try and get to the bottom of this. Frank Gaffney, president of the Center for Security Policy, is with us. Suhail Khan is back, senior fellow, uh, Institute for Global Engagement, and uh, David Horowitz with the Freedom Center. Cleta Mitchell is the chairman of the American Conservative Union Foundation, which is a sponsor of CPAC. And uh, she is actually here. I, I assume, Cleta, you're, you're representing Grover in this debate because you're familiar with all of this. Well, I wouldn't want to say that I'm representing Grover. I'm representing. Um, okay. Well, Grover couldn't make it. He had, he had something going on. All right. Well, can represent himself. Right. All right. Fair enough. Well, anyway, thank you all for being with us. Appreciate it. Um, Frank, you uh, why don't we start with you here? Um, first of all, were you invited to CPAC this year? There was some ambiguity about that or not invited or did you boycott it or what happened? No, I wasn't invited and I didn't boycott it. I attended uh, in a capacity as a you can relate to Sean as a media um, individual. I witnessed some of the exchanges that uh, you've just talked about. And uh, really, I, I was, as much as anything, anxious to find out whether people who have been involved with CPAC and the American Conservative Union Board would take to heart um, concerns that have been expressed by me and, and many others, by the way, about the direction that uh, the CPAC had been going, and I think that that was largely not the case. This is a subset of a larger problem involving Grover Norquist and I think Sue Hill. But the larger problem shouldn't obscure this particular topic. And if I could just say a word about why I think it's so important that you're taking this on as as directly and as seriously as you have, Sean. And that is, well, let me say one no, thing about no this, Frank. Frank, Frank this has gone on for years being in this country or working against us, and yet Sue Khan persists in denying that, and it raises questions about his uh, truthfulness on everything else. Do you deny that the Muslim Brotherhood is in this country and Suhel? Uh, you know, I'm a conservative activist who focuses on conservative issues. Uh, if there is a Muslim Brotherhood, I'm not aware of it. You know, I don't. To my knowledge, they there is no official presence of the Muslim Brotherhood in this country. But uh, that that's up to debate. I'll let the experts on the Muslim Brotherhood discuss that. All I know is I'm not part of it. You know, I'm part of ACU. I'm a Reagan conservative who wants to cut taxes and preserve life and have a strong defense. That's what I work on day in and day out. And one of my other projects is religious freedom, promoting religious freedom for all Christians, Jews, and Muslims around the country and around the globe. 
All right. It came up yesterday, the issue of the role of your father uh, in, in terms of uh, connection to the Muslim Brotherhood. You deny that, Suhail? Absolutely. Absolutely. My father was a patriot. There's no connection whatsoever to Muslim Brotherhood. Myself, my mother, my dad never have been to Egypt. This is just ridiculous. You know, Frank used to say I was al-Qaeda. Then he said I was some type of Saudi operative. Now, because the Muslim Brotherhood is in the news, I've become Muslim Brotherhood. Next week, I'll be a closet Girl Scout. He was, he was the founder of the Muslim Students Association? He was one of many who was involved with the Muslim Students Association in the 60s, correct? Frank? He's on video saying he founded it. I mean, come on. There's, there's a real problem with Suhail is such a slippery wherever the truth is. I'm not being slippery, David. I just said you he was just, one of the original you, you people just, who was part of the Muslim, of a Muslim you, Student you Association just, in the 60s. Absolutely. Just a tape of you saying there is no Muslim Brotherhood in America. That's a, not to my knowledge. You know, not to my knowledge. Not there's not, I, I know there's several Muslim organizations, but I don't know of any Muslim Brotherhood. It's not an Egyptian organization. It says global influence, the Muslim Brotherhood. Yeah. This is your conspiracy yeah. theory, your you know, you and Frank have this stuff John, straight out of the protocols of the elders of Zion. Some control here so that people are not interrupted. I have another problem uh, with our conversation yesterday, um, where I referred to a speech you gave, and you said that it, it was for uh, a speech in front of uh, Muslims, Jews, and Christians, and uh, you were a civil rights advocate, basically. Um, I've looked at the transcript of that speech since yesterday to remind myself. This was a speech given for the Islam Islamic Society of North America, a front of the Muslim Brotherhood. They are not a front of the Muslim Brotherhood. Karen Hughes was, spoke at that same conference. Rick Warren spoke at that conference. Uh, John, These right. are your right, allegations. Let, let, let me, let me, let me, uh, this is where, uh, uh, David, is this when he said, we love, we love death more than you love life? Is that the one you're talking about, David? It was identified in the, in the Holy Land trial captured documents by the FBI, but the, the speech was not about civil rights for everybody. The speech was about the oppression of Muslims by Americans. Uh, and uh, what Sue Hale said is that we prefer uh, death more than they love life. I have, that, I have that clip. Let me play it so everyone can hear it. Our freedoms, my dear brothers and sisters, the earliest defenders of Islam would defend their more numerous and better equipped oppressors because the early Muslims love death, dying for the sake of Almighty Allah, more than the oppressors of Muslims love life. This must be the case where we, when we are fighting life's other battles. What are our oppressors going to do with people like us? We're prepared to give our lives for the cause of Islam. I have pledged my life's work, inspired by my dear father's shining legacy and inspired further by my mother's loving protection and support to work for the ummah and the importance is we love death more than you love life um you know can you explain that to him yeah, I, can I can explain that first this was before 9 11 it is language i wouldn't have used post 9 11 but i also uh, but this was in the context of using examples of dr martin luther king who gave his life fighting oppression I talked about Rosa Parks. David knows that if you look at the entire speech. I talked about people who were willing to give their life to fight oppression. I, was, I talked about hunger. I talked about poverty. I was talking about, to a, I was talking to a group of Christian Muslims and Jews in the audience. It was an interfaith group about how we should not just be stuck at living materialistic lives, but we should try to strive to, to live a faithful life towards working for others. It was not... There, there's, any, you there's cannot... Twist, you cannot I, hang on, let's go on. Frank Gaffney twist, is next. Frank, go ahead. You cannot twist... The, there's the, an objective this is an reality here. to twist the language into something that is extolling some type of, you know, uh, John, support for a suicide bombing or something All like right, that. Uh, guys, guys, we got to do one at a time. Let me go through the words. The earliest defenders of Islam would defend their more numerous and better equipped oppressors because the early Muslims loved death, dying for the sake of Almighty Allah, more than the oppressors of Muslims loved life. This must be the case when we are fighting life's other battles. Uh, what are oppressors going to do with people like us? We are prepared to give our lives for the cause of Islam. I have pledged my life's work, inspired by my dear father's shining legacy, and inspired further by my mother's loving protection and its support, etc., etc. Frank Gaffney, how do you interpret that? 
There are objective realities here. Suhail Khan denies facts that have been demonstrated in court with respect to the organizations that constitute the Muslim Brotherhood's apparatus in America, several of which his parents founded. He says that they founded them. He agrees that they were part of them. He simply chooses to dissemble, deceive, and I think, frankly, um, demonstrate his truthlessness by saying that they have nothing to do with the Muslim Brotherhood when the United States government has demonstrated in a court of law that's the case. And when he goes on to say that he's actually representing his remarks at this Islamic Society of North America Muslim Brotherhood Front Organization as some kind of ecumenical, you know, um, appeal to yuppies That's what to it get was. engaged. That's what it was. It's Rick rubbish. Warren. It's All right, let me let Clea to get in here and respond. She hasn't spoken yet. Go ahead. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And I, you know, I'll preface this by saying that I've said these very things to Frank and to David um, at CPAC. Because I think the work that, uh, in particular, that Frank is doing with regard to alerting the United States and the people of the United States to the threat of Islamic extremism is hugely important. And I don't dismiss that in any way whatsoever. What I am concerned about is what I believe to be uh, personal attacks on Suhail Khan, which essentially are guilt by association from one speech that he gave in 1999. And subsequent to that, uh, as I've said to Frank and to David, subsequent to that speech, Suhail was uh, in the White House. He worked in the Bush White House. He had a security clearance from the Bush White House and the United States government. And it's hard for me to fathom, frankly, that um, that Suhail would be an operative of Muslim extremists working in the White House with a security All right, let me parent. ask, Cleta, do you, do you have any concerns about what we just played from of Suhail from that 1999 speech? Let me play another cut from this. This is 2-7, Greg, uh, where he was also speaking back again in 1999. Our freedoms, my dear brothers and sisters, are under attack. Our freedom to associate with whomever we so choose, to speak out politically and religiously, to travel to practice our faith as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us as God-fearing men and women must be protected. And these rights must be defended with all the determination, all the resources, all the unyielding vigilance of the believing Mujahid. It's Mujahideen, I assume, is the last word there. got cut off. Is that well, what I it was? The, the thing I would say to the, about this, Sean, is that l- let's stop and think what it is we're trying to accomplish here. Are we trying to, 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 let's say that Frank and David were successful in saying Suhail can no longer attend conservative meetings and we're going to throw him out of any conservative meeting. Then what? I'm okay. just, I, look, I, I'm, a, I'm just, all I'm doing, this has been percolating now for years. You agree with that, right? I don't Clint, disagree with that. Well, okay, hang, hang on a second. So, hang on a second. So I figured, why don't we bring everybody together and air out what the difference is here? And I just played two cuts of Suhail. Do any of those comments concern you? I don't think that they concern me in the sense that subsequent to that, those comments, people who had a lot more resources and information than I. So they kind of concern you in terms of what he's saying, but they don't concern you because he got a security clearance later. Well, I think that there, there isn't there a statute of limitations? Isn't this? Isn't there also the, the context in which these comments were made? Suhail has said that given the re, the realities of post 9/11, he would not have used that same language. Yeah. Can I, I mean, can I address I, that, Sean? Yeah. I mean, Suhail, you've asked a, a rhetorical question, I guess, Cleta. But what 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 is at stake here? I believe is an influence operation that is consistent with the ones that are being run against the U.S. government by the Muslim Brotherhood in all kinds of other ways. And if you want to find out more about those, check out Sharia, The Threat to America. A Did major you just Frank trying to sell his books and, and make money? Come on. Suhail Frank, this, Khan this is not, Exposed. Is not, this com is, is another great theory. resource. Don't jam me, Suhail. This is a message to Cleta Mitchell and to conservatives more generally listening to Sean Hannity's show. Get the facts. The facts are that the 
process by which security clearances are given, as we've seen with 30 or so czars under this administration, and I'm sorry to say under previous administrations, is broken. And we do not see people screened out who should be. Suhail Khan's parents, and not just this speech, but his ongoing relationship with Muslim Brotherhood organizations and activities right, well, and agendas we, should have kept him out of the United States when, government. When we it is come, a travesty that he, didn't, that he should not be in the conservative movement today. When we come back, the New York Post had once reported about Alan Moody uh, that he had stated, if we're outside this country, we can say, oh, Allah, destroy America. Uh, and he, we have him on tape saying anybody a supporter of Hamas, anybody a supporter of Hezbollah, uh, so we're going to get into that when we uh, get back, and we'll talk about the relationship that Suhail has with Alamudi and much more as the Sean Hannity Show continues.